Hey guys, it's Ty the Dog Guy here, and I want to do part two of what I started talking about yesterday, where I was talking about um, why I don't use physical corrections for my kids, or I do for my dogs. Again, let me preface by saying I'm not trying to pass any judgment on parents who, who do spank their kids or whatever. Um, now, when I'm, I'm not an expert on parenting, I just have my own personal beliefs, so like I can say there is no judgment here. When it comes to the dog stuff, however, I'm absolutely passing a lot of judgment because I am an expert there. Um, so, but I, I wanted to talk about it. And yesterday I talked about how at its very fundamental, we have such different goals for our kids and our dogs um, that comparing them apples to apples just doesn't work. So what I want to talk about today is, is the concept of moral being a moral agent. And so a moral agent is any creature that can understand you know, behavior based on notions of right and wrong. And I'm about to make some dog people upset because dogs are not moral agents. They do not understand that they shouldn't do things because they're inherently wrong or, they're, or that they should do things because they're inherently right. Um, and it seems like they can, uh, but they simply can't. And so what I mean by that is like people will say, oh, my dog knows he did wrong. Like he peed on the floor and then he looked all sorry. That's called anthropomorphism, and what that is is where you're assigning human-like characteristics to, to something that's not human. The dog's not looking sorry that, oh my gosh, I did something wrong. He's looking, you know, he's looking penitent. He's, look, he's looking sorry because he's worried about you being upset. Not because he did something wrong, but because, you know, there's consequences to his action. Um, and there's a big difference there because what happens with kids is with kids and adults, unless there's some sort of brain injury, we can generalize. Meaning, I can find my, uh, I can catch my kid in the act of stealing at Walmart and, you know, teach them that it's inappropriate, whether through talking to them or some sort of consequence where they have to pay back the money or whatever it is. I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of ways that I can do that, right? Um, so I can teach them these concepts and they can generalize and say, okay, well, I'm not supposed to steal at Walmart, therefore I also shouldn't steal at Target, and I also shouldn't steal at Macy's, and I also shouldn't steal at JCPenney, and I also shouldn't steal because stealing is wrong. When we catch our dogs, quote unquote, stealing, um, and stealing could be anything. We catch our dogs pooping in the house. We catch our dogs chewing something up. We catch our dogs being aggressive, and, and we correct it. They're doing it based on positive and negative. You know, it, I feel better when I don't get the correction, I feel bad when I do get the correction. And so uh, the dog ends up doing it simply based on associations. That's what the dog's behavior is, is, um, is dictated by, is by this makes me feel good or this doesn't make me feel good. It has nothing to do with this is inherently wrong and this is inherently right. Humans can do that. In fact, as far as I know, and I might be wrong, I don't know about dolphins or pigs or something, but Humans are the only moral agents out there to where we have this ability to conceptualize right and wrong. Now, it's not uniform, obviously, because some people do things and they think it's right and other people think those things are wrong. Um, so these aren't uniform definitions, but the concept where humans' behavior is dictated by something that is inherently right or inherently wrong, and that's why I do this behavior and that's why I don't do that behavior, is something that I believe is only, you know, is unique to us. Maybe primates. I don't know about primates. Anyways, but like I say, uh, moral agents um, can understand this concept of right and wrong. So if my daughters can understand right and wrong, I want to teach them on those levels. I want them not to steal because stealing is wrong. Not because somebody might catch them and smack their wrist or, or something worse. Does that make sense? You know, I can do positive and negative with my kids it's strictly, you know, and strictly do positive and negative. Um, and, you know, I could catch them stealing and spank them. Um, um, and maybe they will get some moral lesson out of this, like, oh, you know, I upset dad, maybe this is wrong. But really, I want them to understand that stealing is wrong. I want them to understand that yelling at their sister or, or, or punching their sister is wrong not because it makes me upset, but because it's inherently wrong to hurt somebody um, that, you know, that wasn't causing you immediate threats or something like that, which my kids do to each other. Um, so yeah, that's a whole other story. Um, whereas my dogs, I cannot help them understand that this is inherently a wrong thing and it shouldn't be done simply because it's wrong. With my dogs, I am limited 
not just me, you too, with our dogs, we are limited by creating associations. We can create positive associations around the, thing, around the things we like. We can create negative associations around the things we don't like. Um, and so it's, it's really as simple as that with a dog. And it's really as simple as um, moral agency with our, with our kids. Now, <laughs> changing behavior suddenly becomes way more difficult once we really get into it. Uh, but at the end of the day, because my kids are moral agents, I want them to understand inherent goodness or non-goodness in the, de in the decisions they make. Um, and I don't believe, personally, that I can do that while spanking them. I can't teach them, hey, it's wrong to hit your sister, so I'm going to spank you to teach you that it's wrong. Again, I'm not passing judgment. This is, these are my beliefs. I can't teach my kid it's wrong, inherently wrong to steal, so I'm going to you know, put my hands on you to teach you that. I can't teach my kids it's inherently wrong. So I think it, you know, in using physical correction with a moral agent, I think it sends a mixed signal and a mixed message that just doesn't make sense. Um, whereas with a non-moral agent, a dog who I love, uh, you know, one rung down for my kids. I love my kids up here and I love my dogs down here. Um, with, uh, with my dogs, as much as I love them, they're not going to be moral agents and they're not going to understand inherently right from wrong. And so all we can do is create positive and negative. That's it. You know, um, we can create positive and negative associations and help them understand which behaviors to do and which behaviors to avoid based on that. Um, so that's reason number two why I don't use physical correction with my kids and I do use physical correction with dogs. So stick with me tomorrow. I'm going to come back with reason number three.